Welcome to Time for Hope, a ministry of Hope for Living Media Church with your host and pastor, Dr. Frida Cruz. Join Dr. Frida and her guests as they discuss both real life and spiritual issues and offer scriptural, professional, and practical advice and application for any and all life situations. Thank you for joining us on Hope for Living Media Church for another edition of Time for Hope. I'm Dr. Frida Cruz, your host and pastor, and today I would like to welcome speaker and licensed professional counselor, Yvonne Ortega, as my guest. Today, Yvonne and I will be discussing her book titled, Moving from Broken to Beautiful Through Forgiveness. Do you feel discouraged, deceived, or depressed? Do you worry that you'll never overcome the challenges and heartaches in your life? Do you struggle to forgive yourself and those who have hurt you? Drawing from her own personal struggles, Yvonne uses God's timeless truths to help women exchange shame and guilt for God's grace to forgive themselves, to overcome anger and bitterness, and with God's help, forgive those who have hurt or abused them and learning to break free from the prison of the past and moving towards a new and better future. For more, stay with us. And Yvonne, it's great having you on Time for Hope. For the second time you've been here, we couldn't quite remember what year it was you were here, but you were here with your book about being healed of, of cancer, breast cancer. Yes. So uh, we appreciate your returning with, an, with an, a, another book. And I understand another one's in the making also. So you're traveling these days, speaking and writing these days, and you say you're enjoying all of that full time and loving every minute of it and also doing speaker coaching. Oh, that would be, uh, we used to have a Florence Littower. Yes. Uh, that, I don't know what she's doing these days, but that used to be that you could, uh, she was teaching uh, women uh, to speak and minister and so forth. By the way, on the intro, uh, I mentioned the shame uh, and of women uh, being uh, healed of shame and so forth. This, this forgiveness issue can also extend to men. Men get abused. Uh, they could have been abused by their fathers, and I've had many in counseling since you're a professional counselor. I've had men in counseling that were sexually abused by their fathers. I've had them abused, uh, men abused um, by their mothers and fathers. So we're not going to confine this forgiveness and uh, to just women, because it is an issue uh, that covers both men and women. Yes, and unfortunately, it is an issue that cripples the church worldwide. And you would think that that would be exactly where uh, it's being taught and uh, preached and uh, practiced. You know, we're to be doers of the word uh, and not just hearers only. But I fear, really, in so many churches uh, with other issues that we hear, uh, but we, we're not always doers of what we hear. And uh, with forgiveness, God, you've got a, a part two of what does God say about forgiveness. And he says that if he forgives us, we got, we've got to forgive others. So uh, I'm getting a little ahead. Uh, That's here. okay. But Dr. Frieda, I think what interferes, and it certainly did in my situation, is that we have all these misconceptions about what forgiveness is. Yes. And so with those misconceptions, we think, well, we're not going there. Mm -hmm. I remember thinking, well, if I forgive my ex-husband, he's off the hook. And he wasn't off the hook. Now we're talking, and you're, you're, we've already mentioned your personal struggles. You had an abusive ex-husband, right? Yes, Was Dr. he physically abusive, or emotionally, or both, or? Uh, it started out with verbal and emotional. Verbal abuse, I've had women tell me, actually, they would have rather had a beating than to take the verbal abuse that they had to live, or that they chose to live with, I should say. Yes. Well. In the case of the verbal and emotional abuse, you can't go to the lawyer or the judge and say, 
See my broken heart. See my shattered spirit. See my crushed self-esteem. Mm -hmm. And you do agree uh, that, and you started out early in your marriage, uh, yes. allowing it and putting up with it and not, uh, you know, drawing some lines and saying, uh-uh, this is inappropriate and I'm not going to be tolerating this, which is very, uh, that God would allow us as women, even though we're to be submissive to our husbands, that's misunderstood also. And uh, so there, that, that teaching might have been coming in with you of what I, I'm telling you, I've known women to take uh, beatings and all kinds of things because they ha they understood they were to be submissive even to abusive husbands. And that we would win them by our submission. Well, the scriptures do refer to if we live a life before them, but it's not meaning at that stage uh, that it's abusive or, or violent or abusive husbands that are being referred to. Right. And the scripture verse above that says, submit one to another. So it, and, I, and it can't be that what you have sometimes a woman puts up with out uh, or from a uh, physically or emotionally or verbally abusive husband that they're going to do the same thing when it comes to a neighbor or someone at church or a friend even. That's right. And one of the things is that many women and many men who are abused think, well, if I stay, if I just affirm my love for the person and forgive over and over, the person will change. The person doesn't change. The message that person receives is, I can do whatever I want. Want to do, yes. So uh, that, when you, when you've got your portion about what does God say about forgiveness, of course it, in, it says that. Uh, God said, He doesn't say that we are to allow uh, abusers to abuse us um, and uh, that, uh, that we can't, that we, we forgive so they can do it again. So one of your, uh, one of your answers to uh, that forgiveness doesn't mean the person gets away with wrongdoing. God is never going to put up with wrongdoing or want us to put up with it. No, and he says very clearly, vengeance is, is mine. mine. I, I will, will repay. repay. And, so. the, and Dr. Frieda, in the scripture, it says, love does no harm and that the husbands are to love their wives as Christ loves the church. Let me ask you a question. How often have you heard those people, uh, and it used to be worse many years ago than it is now, coming down with this, a woman is to submit to her husband, and that's all in the same chapter. Uh, how, how often do, do you hear them go on and say what you just uh, quoted that a, a husband is uh, to love his wife as Christ loved the church. Unfortunately, I didn't. And the counsel I received was to stay. I, I've had women tell me that, uh, that they went to a pastor, they told him what was going on in their marriage and so on and so forth, and they were told, uh, go home and pray about it. Go home and pray about it. Go home and be killed. Yeah, and some have been murdered, yes. of course. And um, when I reached the point where I realized if we don't leave, meaning my son and I, he will kill us or we will kill him in self-defense. He hasn't killed anyone since then, has he? No. No. And he, he didn't. But we were approaching that. It was getting extremely severe, and not just of me, but of our son. But you, you do say that uh, it doesn't mean that we are to allow, and that the word we use as counselors, having right. been a professional counselor, uh, enable, that we are not to enable wrongdoing. Um, That's and, right. 
and and uh, abuse. We are not to enable a neighbor. Uh, we're not to enable abusers, so to speak. Right, and that covers the area of forgiveness. Does well, not yes, mean. Yes, I'm glad you're bringing that in because I grew up and I've heard it, and you've heard it too, mm -hmm. uh, and I've taught it uh, and un unwound that about this whole idea of forgive and forget. We can't. If we were God, we could forget, but we're not God. And it is a greater demonstration of God's grace when we remember and still forgive. Yes. Well, uh, when it says that God, uh, God uh, doesn't forget either, He puts our sin from as far as the East is from the West. Uh, there's a difference. Uh, we can uh, remember and not hold it against an individual. We can forgive them and remember all at the same time, but not remember in the same way before we forgave them, right? Right. And that's why I talk about the fact that when we forgive, what it means is that we don't constantly dwell on the past. And we don't constantly think, well, he did this, and he said that, and this happened, and that happened. We let it go. We know that God will take, take vengeance. We had, I, I taught when I was teaching on the subject in many places like you're doing now, that uh, we, we let God be God and we hand them over as it were. We forgive them and hand them over to God. He says with us, with his, his, those he loves, that justice will be served. I, I saw that scripture just recently. I actually did a commentary or a dev morning devotion on it. And uh, that fits right into this. They're telling me it's time for a break, believe it or not, and we will be right back. I want him to hurt like I've been hurt. I hope I never have to lay eyes on her again. These are some of the things I hear angry and hurt people say. At this point of pain, they are usually very reluctant to even think about forgiveness, and this is okay for a time, since premature forgiveness does not allow us to own our anger and feel our pain of loss, grief, and or rejection. But eventually, for our personal, physical, emotional, and spiritual health and happiness, we must confront the issue of forgiveness. Solomon, in his wisdom, related in Proverbs, the 14th chapter and verse 10, each heart knows its own bitterness. Unforgiveness grows bitterness that eats away at us like a canker. We must confront the myth that it hurts or punishes the other person for us to be unwilling to forgive them. Too often, they go on their merry way, footloose and fancy free, while we experience such things as migraine headaches, gastric ulcers, gastritis, shoulder and neck pain, and other symptoms and health risk. Besides the resulting physiological problems, a bitter spirit can leave us emotionally depressed and incapable of enjoying meaningful relationships. And this includes a relationship with our Heavenly Father, the Creator God. According to the scriptures, as long as we need our Heavenly Father's forgiveness, we must be willing to forgive others. And who of us can presume or assert that we stand guiltless before a holy God? When we choose to forgive someone, it does not mean they no longer stand accountable to God others or society, and neither does it mean that you can force your offender to reconcile, but it does mean that you desire to make peace with your offender. According to Ken Sandy, author of The Peacemaker, A Biblical Guide to Resolving Personal Conflict, all of us are called to be peacemakers when it is possible. Peace and reconciliation can be possible when both the offended and offender sincerely desire it. 
and we can experience inner peace when we are willing to forgive and reconcile, even when the other party refuses. Reconciliation will require that offenders confess and ask the offended for their forgiveness, and with a repentant heart, resolve not to continue the hurtful behavior. True repentance will manifest itself as offenders are able to replace the despised behavior with new and positive behaviors, and freedom will be your reward when you continue seeking and receiving forgiveness from God and others, and are willing to forgive those who truly seek your forgiveness. Thanks for staying with us on Time for Hope. Our guest for today is Yvonne Ortega, and we're talking about her book, Moving from Broken to Beautiful Through Forgiveness. That's quite a title. Usually book titles aren't that long, but it says it. It says what we're talking about, uh, Yvonne, moving from broken to beautiful. I would, from reading your book and hearing from you, you have gone through a lot of things that would make you a broken or could keep you a broken woman. You, uh, I actually wonder if what you were going through in your marriage uh, could have contributed to your having breast cancer. I am, when, when I was counseling, I often found, and this is no research, this is no research, this was just some observations on my part, um, that uh, people that went through a lot of grief and the loss of someone, frequently uh, they would develop some kind of cancer uh, during their grief period. Uh, and I don't know if any research has ever been done on that or not, but were you married to your ex-husband at the time you had the breast cancer? It was seven years later, but there has been some research that stress can contribute to cancer. Oh, oh, I like, I'm glad you can come up with that. And uh, because I have believed that and uh, have kind of witnessed it uh, in my uh, counseling ministry and so yes. forth. But uh, anyway, God uh, came through for you. Uh, and we, as I say, you were here earlier several years ago to give that wonderful uh, testimony of, of your getting through uh, breast cancer. You look fine today to Thank me. Thank you. I feel great. You, you, you feel great. Now, we want to uh, talk about, okay, so we've talked about uh, God expecting us to forgive even an abusive husband or an abusive parent. How many women have been uh, abused sexually, especially as children? And that's where so many women come in and have had to uh, go through that journey of being sexually ab abused by either a, 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 a father uh, or a neighbor, a cousin, a brother, sister, whatever. Mm -hmm. It's a painful, I, I've counseled so many women that have experienced that. It's a very painful um, experience. Uh, and so, but we still are to forgive yes. these people. And that's why I stress the importance of forgiveness, not meaning that you trust the individual again. And I met a lady, I talked with her, she had been sexually abused as a child by a neighbor. And she said, Yvonne, if I had trusted him again, I would have gone over. I would, and if I had forgotten and trusted him, gone he to his done house, it again. yes, he, he would, would have. have. And so let's talk about: Does forgiving one mean that we immediately trust them, whether it's a husband or whether it's a neighbor that has abused us? Uh, does God require that we immediately trust them so that they can do it all over again? Absolutely not. not. Forgiveness is one thing. The offender needs to go through repentance, and godly sorrow means that you 
turn away from sin and you turn to God. And there is a change in the person's life. Scripture says we are a new creation. Creations. So if the one who has received the abuse or hurt doesn't see repentance, Godly sorrow. Doesn't experience repentance and that uh, godly sorrow for what they've done. Um, but they can really tell a story, can't they? Uh, and and it, it's so easy to be won over by, by them. Uh, right. They know how to pull it off, don't they? I always talk about the fast talking, smooth walking, silver tongued <laughs> devil. <laughs> Laugh. Oh man, you, but, you've come up with that, uh, saying that really well. Yes, but that's the person who will tell you what you want to hear, yeah. actually make the tears roll down the cheeks, bring the flowers or the candy, and talk about sorrow. Well, the sorrow that's there is, I got caught. That's the sorrow. Just but, like Judas got caught, didn't he? Yes, uh -huh. but it's not the sorrow from the heart that says, I have sinned against God. I have sinned against you, and this will not happen, happen again. again. Or they're willing uh, to get into a recovery group. They're willing to go to counseling. They're willing to do anything uh, that they need to do and that the abused person needs from them, and they prove it uh, by doing. Uh, God says, "We again, I'm bringing it up, we're to be doers of the Word. Uh, and uh, so rather than just talk a good line, we have to show, uh, you know, we have to require from them that they live it out with us. We need to see the evidence. We don't trust someone because the person is breathing. We trust the person because the person has earned the trust. Now, we jump, and we're going to take a jump, but we're going to do this for two weeks, by the way. Uh, there's a lot of stu uh, material here that we need to get out. And we're also going to be talking about another book uh, written by uh, Dr. Don Wilton, pastor of First Baptist Church here in Spartanburg. It's amazing that we didn't intend it at the time that I had two people uh, set up to do, uh, to do shows today and they ended up on the same subject. And so uh, Dr. Wilton uh, has become ill and can't, so he has agreed that we can go ahead and talk about his book on forgiveness. And so it gives us a chance, you and I, an opportunity to go a second week uh, on the subject and take some of his views uh, and uh, we'll be talking about your book, of course. I want our viewers to make sure that they get a copy of your book, Moving from Broken to Beautiful Through Forgiveness. So then when we think of um, this uh, forgiveness, um, we, we really think we're hurting the person by withholding forgiveness, that, that we'll, get, we'll get even with them, we'll withhold forgiveness. And guess what? That's not the truth, is it? No. The one who holds anger, bitterness, and resentment is the one who that is the suffers, and uh, that is we need to get that across. There's phys there can be physical suffering, there can be emotional suffering, it can be even spiritual because uh, we can be so angry uh, that we'll we'll it will break it can break our relationship you know, with the Lord. So yes. we can suffer in all kinds of ways from unforgiveness and the other person gets to go, f uh, the, the uh, f person that has caused the pain or abuse gets to go free. Well, that person has gone on with his life. So we are foolish to be stuck in the past to be stuck in, ooh, I like it. Uh, your whole book actually comes down to that in the final analysis. We don't have to remain stuck in the past. That's right. And that's where we want to pick up next week, okay? Uh, yes. We'll pick up with that idea that we don't have to remain. Yvonne's written about it. Make sure that you get a copy of Yvonne's book. and Make sure that uh, you make a point that you want to uh, 
tune in, as it were, next week as we pick up on the whole idea of leaving the past and moving towards the future. And then I have a, a couple of things to share with you from uh, a, uh, some viewers. Uh, and the first one is, Dear Dr. Frieda, I was a victim of sexual abuse and have been healed with the help of God. I forgave my abusers to set them free. Please pray that I will be able to walk in the liberty and freedom that Jesus has given me. If you haven't shared your uh, prayer request with us, we encourage you uh, to do that. And then I have an encouraging note. Uh, dear Dr. Frieda, I believe the two main reasons the Time for Hope program helps so many people are your professional experience and knowledge and your faith and the compassion that follows through your voice and words. Blessings to you. And I want to let you know if you're watching today or if uh, or if you've just heard me read this this is has proven to be a tremendous blessing to me I feel blessed by this individual and I I thank the Lord uh, that I have the, these viewers that can express and write and encourage me it's a great encouragement the other thing that I would uh, ask from you, that would give us great encouragement is that if you can uh, help us financially um, with this ministry, that would be greatly appreciated also. And then, uh, of course, I would ask you to make sure that you uh, join us again next week as we continue, as I continue with Yvonne, our, and we'll be bringing Dr. Wilton's book in on that also with this whole subject of forgiveness. A free fact sheet that contains additional information about today's topic is available upon request from our ministry. You can also receive a copy of today's resource for a donation of at least $12 to the Time for Hope ministry. Any additional donation you wish to send will be greatly appreciated. Call us at 800-669-9133. Write us at Post Office Box 2169, Spartanburg, South Carolina, 29304. Or visit our website, at timeforhope.org. As we continue to give out messages of hope, a financial gift of any amount to support this ministry will be greatly appreciated. When you send us a gift, you are joining us in offering hope to many viewers seeking help and hope for their situations and enabling us to inform and inspire viewers to expand our mission as they learn and in turn can minister more effectively to hurting people around them. Look for Dr. Frieda's scriptural devotions on our Time for Hope TV ministry Facebook page. And to see this program again online, visit our website or search for the Time for Hope TV ministry on YouTube, iTunes, Roku, or Facebook. Until next time, have a great week. And remember, it is time for hope.